Tesla just dropped their FSD price to $8,000 or $99 a month. Thinking about buying FSD? Not sure if it's worth it? After trying FSD version 12 for a month with the first 12.3.3 and then trying 12.3.4 in the dark and finally trying 12.3.4 in the rain on my way to downtown LA, I won't be buying it now and here is why. So when we drive FSD, what we actually expect is to be sleeping in the car like this puppy over here, or eating our coffee and bagel while we drive to work, or even working on some emails or paper while we drive to work. It's actually more stressful supervising than driving. Problem is, we are barely at level two. Here are the six levels of autonomy. So level zero is no automation. And what this means is that human performs all tasks, which means driving, steering, everything. So there's no automation here. Level one is driver assistance. So that's cruise control or like lane keeping. Level two, partial automation is like auto steering, auto acceleration, auto braking. So that's where Tesla FSD is at right now. We're barely at level two. So all of these levels, 0 to 3, it requires human monitoring. So there's no point. There's, we can't do anything like sleeping or eating our food because we're expected to be monitoring the whole time. So level 3 is conditional automation. What this means is that driver can divert their attention and driver needs to be ready if requested. So here is actually where we start removing the need for the driver to be paying attention. So this is where it really starts removing the human supervision. Level four is high automation. So what this means is that during malfunction, no need for driver intervention. But the thing is, this is only going to work in limited conditions. And level five is full automation. And this is where it works under all conditions, no driver needed, no wheels or pedals needed either. So this is the holy grail of self-driving cars is reaching level five. FSD needs to be faster. So this is the one main things with the limitations of FSD. So it's pretty slow at stop signs and it's slow to make right turns at light. And as you can see in this video here, it's just slow to make turns in general. Here I'm driving near local, on local streets and I'm near the stop sign. And you can see it slowly creep up. It's taking its time. And then finally it makes its right turn. So if it needs to be anything, uh, anything worth buying, it better be faster than you know how I would drive in general. And FSD needs to make better decisions. So right now, what I'm seeing is that there's hesitation when exiting the carpool lanes, and that doesn't really make my driving experience very nice. So here's an example of when I was uh, driving in the carpool lane when it was raining. But here we have, usually there's a delayed or frequent lane change. Sometimes when you're driving, you're going to see the car uh, swing between lanes back and forth, probably trying to maintain the speed. But the thing is, sometimes when you look pretty far ahead, you actually see traffic slowing down, and it will be changing lanes when it's going to slow down anyway. So I wouldn't say that the, its decision-making in terms of when to change lanes is not quite the best yet, and there's definitely some work to be done there. Also, obstacle avoidance limitation. So it's not very good at avoiding things such as potholes like this. You definitely don't want to do that. And right now, you definitely have to intervene to avoid something like this. And it can't avoid real kills. And just in general, it can't avoid, avoid much stuff on the floor. So all of these things can't be automated yet. And you have to do a lot of manual intervention. And personal driving preferences is another big thing, is that um, certain times when I'm driving, I prefer to be left biased in the carpool lane. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but a lot of times I feel like I'm about to crash into the car on my right. So usually when I'm in the carpool lane, I like to go a little bit more towards the left. Also, I prefer to slow down when the road curves, but sometimes when it's maintaining the speed, it's still going pretty fast. So that's another thing I would try to adjust for the FSD. So something like this where the road is very curvy, um, I would definitely want it to slow down. And let's take a look at the cost analysis. So if we put in $8,000 in a high yield savings, that's about $400 per year. So that's how much you could actually be earning with this $8,000. 
And at $99 a month, that's $1,188 a year. So, you know, for something that's not a refined, polished product, I don't know if I want to spend this much money on FSD. And with $8,000, come on, I could buy 1,600 cups of oat milk latte. So wouldn't that be nice? So personally, I'll wait for FSD unsupervised before I buy it. So hopefully this gave you a better idea of where FSD is at and will give you a better informed decision in making your purchases. So see you next time.